um, this is a project we have done uh, led by uh, Maria Kutaki. When was it? Uh, 2009. Amalia, do you guys remember? 2010. It has an interesting story, not related only to its creation, but what has happened afterwards. So, in a way, especially to this conference, I think we are interested in both. Another thing I find interesting is the fact that it coincides with uh, short reference we made to the ongoing research on mass plastic and industrial settlement in the sense that both projects, in a way, their key architectural concepts, they derive out of trying to understand how a specific productive culture, and culture has to do with cultivating, which is an active way of producing, and the civilization, the way which gets produced out of production. So in a way, production, uh, culture, is a world which in itself, again, it hides the very close relationship. Uh, the relationship you cannot have it without in a way. value, in a way, economic value, production, and uh, civilization and the culture. Okay. So in a way, we're talking about tautology, uh, tautology. Uh, in this project also, uh, the new architectural concept was based on trying to reinterpret the kind of productive past which was not there anymore, and that's a great difference with us perspective, of course. But it has been a city which was great in its recent past for its uh, uh, remanufacturing in a way of uh, local uh, farming products which were being uh, through the uh, industrial processes in a way installed in the uh, late 19th century and early 20th century they were being exported and Pyrgos and Ilia in general in southwestern Greece was one of the most productive places in Greece in the past. Uh, now basically there is nothing like that. It's mostly an administrative capital of the prefecture of Ilia and there is no other reason why to be there or to go there. Whereas it has been a very rich and very productive place. Now we have been invited by the municipality to do a preliminary study, which we are going to shortly describe without getting into many architectural details. Uh, in a way, it is a case study because we are we think that uh, the issues raised are of a more general interest, but the, this study in itself. Uh, is adequate to, to demonstrate certain thoughts about this. Uh, it has to do with, uh, in a way, forming architecturally a new development strategy uh, based on the inherent kind of uh, characteristics of uh, the local culture, nature, society, etc. And in that way, we were trying to find a new regional and national role for the city of Pyrgos. Uh, basically, all this strategy was localized, focused on the one side of the of the city. The, it's uh, the borderline, in a way, between the existing city and its future extension, and it's connected to most of the important networks: the railways, the national highway, and the local regional roads. So it's a very uh, key point, and it's one asset that the municipality has got uh, from the bank. Uh, the bank had got it from the bankrupted uh, ex-mayor, who was also the biggest industrialist in the city. And in a way, this huge plot of land, at least, it received this way as a real estate issue, is, uh, was there, but was more like a rubbish space, in a way, a tanker, than something which could be useful, even though so strategically located for the city. Uh, Another interesting thing, which is interesting, firstly for architects, is the fact that we have to handle very different scales. Like from the, the scale of the object, having to do, for example, with all the machinery which was still there, to the scale of urban and landscape design. And that was very challenging. 
from a strategic and developmental point of view, this is also very interesting because it allows a more holistic approach in many senses. So we believed from the very beginning that this was something very interesting and useful. Now looking for the specificities, the uniqueness, the identity, which is a normal psychoanalytical process. Like when you try to think strategically, you have to understand what you are, basically. And when you are in a way the strategist or in a way you are the architect, in that sense, you have to be this other person you are studying, which is the identity of the city. Now, the city of Pelos has some very common characteristics in many rural cities in Greece. Uh, the absence of centricity, of high density, in a way of a very straightforward urban character. In other cities, of course, there is a historical center which is you know, more city looking and it has a, a similar past. But Pigos is very difficult to define. You cannot even really know where is the central square. In a way. It's like a sprawl without a, without a city. Uh, as we talked to the mayor in our first meeting, we are sure that they're going to do something good for you. You know, can't really get worse. Uh, so, the absence of centricity and density, uh, and this very interesting, you know, truth that the rural and the urban they coexist. Now, it sounds positive this way I'm putting it already, but. At the present, maybe it's not that positive still. But uh, it's what we have to work with. Uh, it was very clear from the very beginning that even though we had to think from a European point of view, in the sense of trying to uh, design something which could be fitting uh, the kind of strategic axis of financing, you know, making development, following uh, agendas like the Euro 2020, on the other hand, we could not easily transfer directly specific kind of spatial models and development models to the city. <coughs> and this whole concept of the earth culture, in a way, uh, which I developed also in the introduction now, uh, where it was, in a way, the area where we focused what we tried to do. At the same time, we can mention the fact that the municipality, which had done nothing about this space before, on the other hand, they had a program about it which was needing at least double the space, and added to that, they were also wanting a park. So, ideally, we should have the whole city of Pyrrhus being demolished to remodel it and rebuild it in order to fill up you know, all the programmatic kind of details and the list of activities in a way that the municipality wanted. So this like, whole atmosphere of uh, stagnation and the kind of uh, not very clear character, this, this kind of heterogeneity, heterogeneity. Uh, on the other hand, they, they were mirrored in something positive in the fact that, for example, uh, this rural uh, and urban hybrid was something which could allow a new city under the project with a lot of uh, free space, but which would, would, which would become, after the intervention, a public space. A public space which could be useful uh, 24 hours a day, uh, all year round, both for the citizens and for the people uh, we were hoping to attract, uh, following the program uh, that has been eventually formed for the proposed plan. Uh, okay, basically this was a, a factory having, having to do with olive oil and olives in various ways and forms of new things to them. Uh, and also tomato kind of industry. Uh, a multiplex in a way in terms of production. It has been the product of an additive process, and this architecture is interesting in the sense that uh, there is no clear, in a way, architectural form from the beginning. There is no architectural composition. It's something which gets 
created by adding almost you know, a little way of building things. Another thing which was very interesting talking to the engineers of the factory is that I mean, a factory in a way doesn't have an architecture. A factory is an assembly of machines which have to be in a specific place following the production line. So you have to lift something up, you need something to hold it there. It's not about in a way architecture in the way we understand it. The important thing is the production line. This was very challenging to us because you know, on the one hand we had to deal with the living shells and industrial kind of relics. For us in the beginning it was the of buildings. The buildings themselves were not that nice, that really important, that you know, fascinating. And on the other hand, we realized that the important thing there and the real asset was the production line itself, which was all there. I think they threw it away now. And of course, there is this social factor which gives really sense and meaning to all this event. The fact that people still today uh, have many memories about this and they really think of the Cistris factory as something important for people, even if it's something which has, it has been decades since the last time it operated. Now, we're not getting into many details about the project because it's not an architectural conference. But uh, we were lucky enough to be able to present in many occasions, also in the DT conference organized by the PO, uh, the project. And the press in general and our colleagues were very happy about it. Of course, there was a lot of criticism. We followed a very open process of uh, negotiating the project, both with the municipality, uh, local stakeholders like the Farmers Association, other groups. We had two open meetings with, uh, in the uh, like a public assembly in a way in the city. Also all the media contributed to this, local media. A lot of colleagues, uh, architects and stuff in the scientific context of the project. They had their comments about it. So in a way we could say we were very happy about not feeling very kind of bossy about it, like really trying to discuss about this project. And at the end of the day, it, it was good because everybody was happy, and that's why how it eventually got the cover in Castellani newspaper. Uh, it was coming from the future, it was the time pool. Okay, we had a mix of activities in order to provide with this all year round and all day round kind of mix of functions that can give meaning to something which is not there working only let's say 12 hours and then something shut down. It's not something only for tourists, it's something for many different sorts of uh, social categories and activities. And the basic idea is that there is an artificial ground, beneath that there is a kind of uh, storage space and market for the kind of primary agricultural materials, uh, like tomatoes, tons of tomatoes coming from the Cosmic of the Kista, wholesale. Uh, and then on top of this, in a way there is something like a park with different areas for different activities, the planetarium and the old buildings of the factory that are being used for a mixture of activities which can also combine different financing uh, models, either directly financed in a way by the state or the EU, like in the case of the museum, for example, or uh, activities which are completely private in a way. And all these are contributing in a way to the organization having the back. And in this example. Uh, OK, uh, the proposal uh, was needed for the municipality to uh, write a proposal to the Ministry of Finance and Development uh, for the so-called ESPA in Greek, National Strategic Reference Framework. It's one of the biggest, uh, you know, how you, one of the biggest in a way, possibilities for the public authorities and private authorities. Private, private bodies have some serious money in you know, order to do something. Um, it got approved. I think it raised something like, how much was it? 
3.5 billion euros for second hazards. To exceed the signature now. That's 4 million euros. And nothing like that happened. If you go to Bilos, you won't find any similarity to the of this show. And they are more historic than, than the historic city of Bilos themselves. The thing is that the whole thing about ESPA is that it needs a preliminary study for a project to get approved, but nobody cares if what gets built eventually is the same project it got approved in the report. So, to quote its implementation student. Thank you.